If you run a wholesale Shopify store, then you might want to sell in bulk quantities. Or in other words, you don't want people to be able to buy just one item. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you two things. The first is how to set a minimum order quantity. So for example, let's refresh this page. And as you can see, it starts from six. And I cannot go lower than six, but I can go higher than six one by one. And the second thing that I'm going to show you is how to set a box quantity. So for example, if I'm selling boxes of this cheese, and there's six of these cheeses in one box, then I want people to be buying in multiples of six, right? So six, 12, 18, 24, you get the idea, right? Multiples of six. So that's kind of what I call a box quantity. And I'm going to show you how to set that up as well. There is going to be a little bit of coding involved. But I would say it's like easy level coding. And also just a note that I am using dawn theme, this demonstration will be using the dawn theme code. So if you're also using dawn theme, this is going to be very easy for you. If you're using a different theme, then it might be a little bit more difficult because you need to find where the code is for this uh, quantity field. But once you find that the process will be pretty much the same. Okay, so we're going to be using meta fields so that you can set the uh, minimum quantity or the box quantity per product. Um, and if you're not very familiar with the meta fields, then I suggest checking out my channel. And I've already made a video explaining meta fields. But it's going to look a bit like this. So we're on the product page. And when you scroll down to the bottom, you can see these meta fields that you can fill out. So for this product, the minimum quantity is six. Now you can ignore that there's two of them, you're going to be doing one of these, you're either going to have a minimum quantity or a box quantity, I think. So I'll show you quickly how to set up the meta field, you're going to go to settings. And then you're going to go to meta fields into products, and then you're going to define a meta field or create a new meta field. Name it something like minimum quantity. Okay. Um, or box quantity, depending on which one of these you want to do. Now, namespace and key namespace, I'm going to make it wholesale. This isn't really important. It's just for your own organization. So mine's called wholesale dot minimum quantity. And then we're going to select the content type of number, this is always going to be a number. And that's all you need to do. Just save that I won't save it because I've already done it. But when you go, when you save and when you go back to your product page, you will now see the meta field appear here, I recommend using just one product that you're going to test on while we build this code. And so for that one product, just fill out a number like six and save that product. And we're going to move on to the coding part of this tutorial, we're going to be changing the code of this quantity field. So to have a look at what this code looks like, first, you just want to right click and click inspect. And we need to find that code in our theme. If you're using dawn, um, I can tell you that it's in main product liquid, you can just search the files here for main product liquid, open that up. And then you're just going to scroll down until you find this quantity code. If you want to speed that up, you can search. And here it is. This is our input. And I'm just going to make some space here. So that we can write our code right above it. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to bring in the value of that meta field that we just set up and that you've already filled out, I hope, and to bring in the meta field value, we're just going to go back to settings and then meta fields again. And we're going to have a look at what that actually looks like. Um, whichever one of these cr you created, remember, once again, ignore the fact that I have two, you will just have whatever you named it, whether you're doing minimum quantity or box quantity. And just this line here at the bottom, you can just copy and paste this. And that's what lets you output that meta fields value in code. So here's how you output that double curly braces, and then paste that in. And in my case, because I've got six, um, that will literally just output the number six. Okay. Um, so what do we want to do with this, we want to set the attributes on this input field, this code here, that's this input. 
we want to set the minimum attribute to be six and we want to set the value to be six. Now we could do this like this if we were hard coding this meaning it would be exactly the same for every product um, that's what we would do but we want to be a little bit more sophisticated than that we want it to be different on each product and come from this meta field value so we want to do this okay that will output the meta field value as the minimum on this quantity input so let's save and see what that does Okay, as you can see, that's now working for me, but we've got this random six floating here, and that's just because I've left this here. But it is now showing six, which is what we want. We can go up, but we cannot go lower than six because of that minimum value. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Instead of this, what I want to do is give it kind of a nickname. Okay, so instead of these double curly braces here, I'm just going to replace these inner ones with percentage signs and this is also liquid code but it means we can actually do something with this i'm going to say assign min quantity equals okay um, and what that does is it's setting a variable or basically just a nickname for this piece of code so now we can use this shorter piece of code instead of the long one Okay, so that's a little bit cleaner. I think that we've pretty much done what you want to do if you're going for the min quantity. Now, there is one thing that customers can still do if they want to go lower than six, and that is actually edit this themselves with the keyboard. So I can put the number two here if I click into this and actually change it, right? Um, and we don't want people to be able to do that Although it is kind of strange uh, for people to do that, I'm not sure how many customers would think of doing that. But if you want, uh, you can disable uh, editing of this field. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We're just going to add another attribute to this input. And it's going to say on key down equals, and then these quotation marks as always, and we're going to say return false. Let's save that and see if it works. So now I can't backspace. I can't do anything. Actually, I can't use my keyboard at all. I think this solution is OK if you really want to prevent people from editing things here. Um, the only problem I see with this solution is if you want people to add like, I don't know, a thousand of your product, then it's going to take a long time for them to actually click that many times so in that case you might want to uh, leave this bit out and let people actually manually edit it now if you're doing a box quantity then there is another thing that you can do so we're going to use an attribute called step and step lets you dictate what the um the plus and minus buttons do so instead of going one by one we want to go by six right so we could write six here or we could use our minimum quantity again so i'm going to add this here obviously if you're doing box quantity you would have named this box quantity i'm just going to save this and now that is going up by six which is pretty cool right and pretty straightforward Okay, so we're almost finished, but not quite yet, because there are a couple of things we need to do just to make sure that this isn't affecting other products. And also for the cart page, we've done this 6, 12, 18, right? But on other products, for example, look at these shorts. Nothing's showing up at all. Actually, we've broken it. And the reason is because on these shorts, I haven't filled out these these fields right and so this is coming up as blank and so the um, the value is coming up as blank the minimum is blank all of this is blank right and we don't want that and so we need a fallback that resets all of these values to one if uh, this is blank okay so we're gonna do it like this we're gonna make an if statement here you're gonna put if 
and then we're going to say if min quantity uh, is double equal sign blank, oops, blank, then again assign, okay, but this time we're going to reassign min quantity to be one and then close this off and if and so what that does is if this returns nothing if this is blank if it's empty um, then it just resets it to one and all of these values here will get the number one instead let's save that and let's see if it fixed my shorts it did everything's back to normal and if we go back to my cheese product it's still working correctly and the last thing we need to do is fix the cart so this affects you if you're doing the box quantity or the minimum quantity when we add something to cart and then we go to the cart and we'll see that okay the quantity here is six but we can go lower now so a person could buy just one if they were to change this here so we don't want that and if you're doing the box quantity then you also want this to change according to your step so again you will need to find this quantity field inside your theme code and it'll be somewhere on the cart template if you're using dawn theme then this template is called main cart items dot liquid if you're using another theme then you might want to look for the word cart um, just type it type it in in the search here and then have a look through those templates use the search function also to find where the quantity field is it'll look pretty much exactly the same so here is our quantity input here we have a minimum right and we're going to do almost the same thing on this template so we can copy our code from the product template we can copy this part at least copy paste um, might want to fix up the indentation a little bit and I'm using tab and shift tab to do that um, and we just want to change one thing because this isn't a product page we can't access the product like this we need to access the product through the cart item so what we're going to do is just add item onto here so this enters the cart item and then it looks for the product enters the product and so on so that should work and now what do we want to do here okay so we want the min to also be the min quantity so let's do our double curly braces here and put min quantity in here now the value we actually don't want to change this because the initial value should be item.quantity which is the quantity that your customer has added to the cart okay so we're not going to be changing this unlike on this page where we changed it okay so don't overwrite uh, don't overwrite this code with the code that you wrote here okay we're only changing min and then if you're disabling the uh, keyboard editing we're going to write the on key down return false and then if you're doing box quantities we're also going to do step and we're going to write min quantity in here as well and as you can see now that's working fine and it's updating the card six at a time and it doesn't go lower than six and we can't edit it with our keys either and that's all we need to do in terms of coding now if you want to grab any of the code that I used in this tutorial uh, you can visit my website ed.codes and then under tutorials you'll find the tutorial and scroll down and you can find any of those code snippets if you just want to copy and paste the last part that you need to do is to actually fill out these meta fields for all of your products depending on how many products you have that might be very quick or that might be a huge task if you have hundreds of products so you're gonna have to edit them in bulk I think and this is what that will look like so you can just 
put this in here or you can copy and paste across multiple cells right and unfortunately you won't find meta fields under this drop down you won't actually be able to select them you need to edit the uh, the URL to access these and to really learn how to do that I recommend watching my video on how to bulk edit meta fields in Shopify 2.0 and you'll see the link to that tutorial right now.